Mark Moss is an American entrepreneur, investor, founder, and YouTuber. Moss's personal website claims that he has founded seven companies, each of which would grow past seven figures within their first year. Moss has also invested in private companies, gold mines, oil fields, technologies, and cryptocurrencies. Listen to the full podcast to prepare for the events, and are we on the verge of Great Reset? Please follow us on YouTube and open your notifications for further podcasts. Enjoy. So let's talk about what is WEF anyway. Let's with, well, first off, what's WTF? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, That's really the most accurate statement. I, I, I say that because there's a, a cool website by a couple of buddies I have. It's called WTF Happened in 1971.com. Right. That's a good one. You've been there. You've seen that, right? No, no, no. Okay, I, so I agree. It, it, all it is is just a bunch of charts. So it's a web page, WTF Happened 1971, and all it is is charts. And it shows since 1971 what's happened with the income inequality, the obesity rate, the incarceration rate, the divorce rate, the uh, in, uh, you know medium income, uh, debt levels, everything since 1971. Why since 1971? It's the year we got off the gold standard. So you can see, so it's just, it's a hundred charts that show what the WTF happened in 1971. And the, you can see it, it's just like crazy. Well, what's, the name of, what's the name of this book? W, it, it's a website, WTF happened in 1971. Good, good, and the it. reason why I start with that, which you said WTF is because when was the World Economic Forum founded? 1971. Oh, wow. What? Is that true? WTF happened in 1971. Wow. And so uh, the whole world went off the rails in 1971. When you distort the money, you get all types of distortions. And, and, and one of those is seen like a WTF, a WEF. Well, the good news is, you know, I got mine. Because it was in 1972, I realized what had happened. Mm -hmm. I was flying in Vietnam. And that's when I went on the gold standard. And I bought my first little Kruger in in uh, Hong Kong for about 50 bucks. Well, no, you never left the gold standard, see? The well, dollar left yeah, the gold standard. Yeah, you just we didn't, jumped we didn't. So, it, so for Mark, it was a good news for me. <laughs> so, Mark, a lot of people don't know who Klaus Schwab is yeah. or WEF. Can you just give us a little history on that? Yeah, so um, a lot of people might have heard of something like Davos, where every year the world leaders, <clears throat> they like to, a lot of people call them the world elite. I don't like to use that word. They're not elite in anything. None of us would hire them in our business. But the world leaders, the, the, the policy makers, if you will, the think tankers, they get together every year in Davos. And so you hear like the Davos man uh, in reference or something. And they so go, it's politicians, it's business leaders, all of that. It's, poli it's both because uh, pol what their policy is, is this uh, public private partnership, public private partnership. That's this whole public, thing. Public private. Okay. So it's, it's okay. politicians okay. and business people getting together, public and private, getting together to set policy. So they get, they get together every year uh, in, in Davos, Switzerland at the World Economic Forum. And so it was founded by this guy, Klaus Schwab, who um, he's a uh, German. His father has uh, deep ties into Nazi Germany, obviously. Uh, there's deep ties there. He studied under um, Henry Kissinger. And uh, he's created this think tank, bringing these people together to try to figure out a better way, a more equitable way to run the world. Watch out. Anytime you see that word equitable, you know what they're talking about. They're talking about Marxism. And so what really what he's done is he's just taken the same ideas. You said we haven't seen this before, but of course we have. It's the same ideas being rehashed. And so it's globally. just globally. globally. And so it's just Marxism all over. So they get the world leaders together, the, the politicians, the public and the private, and they come together in what he's calling stakeholder capitalism stakeholder capitalism. So instead of, uh, we talked about last night at dinner, how Rothbard said that businesses should focus on profit. He says, no, no, business shouldn't focus on profit. Business should focus on the, um, the community, ESG, environmental, social governance. We should be equitable. And so um, basically distorted all these things, but they want to do it through power, through control, forcing people to comply instead of educating people and showing people better ways. And so they've done it um, through the public private partnership. So basically through the money. So now if you don't fall in line with what their policies are, well, no money for you, no investment for you. Right. Um, and, and if these big companies don't follow along with their policies and push these things down, they don't get the funding and then they basically get pushed out of the, out of the. Uh, so let's, let's step back a little bit. So who is Mark Moss? I mean, how do you know <laughs> That's so a much? good question. Well, um, I'm just uh, I'm just someone that grew up reading Rich Dad Poor Dad. Yeah, and uh, it's a good answer. Yeah, <laughs> uh, you know I've said many times I think uh, I I got on this like personal development path. I read um, uh, How to Think and Grow Rich, and that was the first book that kind of 
pushed me over. And then I read Rich Dad Poor Dad, and like those two books basically kind of sent me off into this angle. And I'm, uh, I'm good just company. Yeah, I'm just somebody who's uh, who's uh, I, I figured out how to make a lot of money when I was young. I started buying bank owned repos when I was 18 years old. And uh, luckily, my network was my net worth. I had a friend who was doing it. He didn't teach me, but I saw that it was possible. I started buying bank-owned repos, zero down. The bank was just trying to get rid of them. This is 1995. Um, I made a lot of money. I built two businesses, one in a, one in an internet business out of the dot-com boom, or bust, I should say, uh, one medical business. In 2008, psh, I got hammered. You know, In 2008, like everybody, I, I, uh, I was really good at making money, but I didn't understand this financial system. Like, what the heck just happened to me? And so, WTF. W- <laughs> yeah, exactly. WTF. <laughs> It happened to me. I, I I was good at making money, but I didn't realize there was these forces that had control over my life that I wasn't really paying attention to. The macro. The macro. And so for the last 12 years, I've studied the macro. I learned a concept called uh, wealth transfers. Money doesn't disappear. It transfers. And so when I lost my wealth, somebody else got that. I didn't like that. <laughs> that's a very good point. I didn't like that. And so I- And re- that's happening today. And it's happening today. And so I realized there's certain times and conditions where these wealth transfers happen. And so I've spent the last 12 years studying these wealth transfers to figure out how do I get on the receiving end instead of being on the receiving end of those things. So where'd you grow up? Yeah, so I grew up in Southern California. Where, where in Southern California? In, uh, in Orange County. I lived in Texas until I was in junior high, and then I moved to California with my parents. My dad uh, had to, we had to leave California because the real estate market crashed. He was in construction. California was booming, so we went out there, and uh, grew up on the beach surfing. Uh, a little bit uh, similar to your your upbringing, right on the beach, um, which is a good life. Um, and so, yeah, so I live in Southern California, I have a family, I have a couple kids that I'm trying to raise up the right way. My daughter's going to be splashing on the scene here pretty soon. You'll be you'll be seeing and hearing from her soon. Um, I think that's a great idea that you know you. We, we educate our kids, not the teachers. Yeah. And if we don't do that, we're in trouble, big trouble. Yeah. So anyway, thank, thank, I'm glad you're doing that. And so how did you get into the education piece yeah. and kind of getting, trying to figure out what's going on today and we're going to get into what we can do to turn this thing around? Yeah. So um, after, after making a bunch of money and then ha- building a couple of businesses and then losing a bunch of money, um, I was like, I got to figure this out. And so... Um, you know, when your pain is high enough, you'll figure out a way. And so I just started digging into what, what, what was I missing in my education? We talked about that. I vowed to my family like this, my wife and I, my young daughter at the time, I'm like, this will never happen to me again. I'm going to figure this out. Trust me. Um, and so I just started pouring into that about, uh, I started investing in, or buying all these investment newsletters and, you know, every, every piece, I, I became a gold bug, you know, got onto Mike Maloney and I figured it was the fiat money system that was the problem and now I'm a gold bug and et cetera. Um, and then uh, in 2015, I started buying Bitcoin. And uh, really, I also have to credit uh, Sovereign Man. Shout out to Sovereign Man. He was really influential in kind of building out this like uh, uh, worldview where I need to decentralize my life. And I was in the process of setting up offshore bank accounts and trusts um, in Panama. And I looked at Bitcoin. And I said, well, this is kind of the same thing. I get my money out of the bank. That's exactly what I'm trying to do. So I got into that and, and uh, I, I started writing a cryptocurrency research newsletter from 2016 to 2019. I personally researched and published over a thousand pages of, of research on every single crypto project that was how, out how there. Did you- how you what what prepared you to become a researcher? That's a whole curiosity, thing. really. Curiosity, you know. I had I had been uh, I had been in investing or buying these investment newsletters for now at this point whatever seven eight years, and so I had seen how it's done. I'm reading these research reports, you know, hundreds and hundreds of research reports from other people. So you kind of start to figure out how to put I mean, it together. Did you did you go to college and all that? Nah, nah, I didn't go to college. I um. I, answer. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I didn't go to college. Uh, my parents really wanted me to go to college and um, I didn't. And, uh, you know, I tried. Unfortunately, I have to say this, especially to like my kids. It's like I am not a fan of college, uh, but that doesn't mean that I don't like education. Yeah, exactly. Correct. I just wanted to learn what I wanted to learn. I didn't want to learn this other stuff. And more importantly, I wanted to learn it and I wanted to apply it. So I'm learning and people ask me, as I'm sure they ask you all the time, like, what book should I read? And it's like, well, what are you trying to learn? And so typically if I'm hiring people, I'll read a book on management. Maybe if I am trying to scale my business, I might read a book on marketing, um, you know, and so you're learning what you need and then you apply it. And then if you can't even teach it, which is even better, right? And so, uh, yeah, so I, it was, it was out of necessity though, right? So mother necessity is the mother of invention. So I needed to know what was going on. Um, no one else cared about me as much as I cared about myself. So I poured in myself and I've read, you know, a thousand books. Well, your, your, uh, your information is timely, priceless, accurate, uh, which I appreciate. So, um, how much time do we have a break here? Three minutes. Okay. So let's, let's get back to our, my, 
What yeah. does Kissinger have to do with Klaus Schwab? That's and, my question. And the question. whole Great Reset. Yeah. So I think um, I, I, I reference quite often what Henry Kissinger said, which was uh, maybe a, a warning to the world, but I think it was more of a, of a call to arms on their side. So he said, if you control the food, you control the people. If you control the energy, you control the continent. If you control the money, you control the world. And then, well, let's, let's back up. It's a lot of people don't know who Kissinger was. Oh, he's still around. He's still alive. He's still right? alive. Yeah, he's still alive. Who he's, was he? He's pretty old. Well, he's, he's Secretary of State, right? For Nixon. Yeah. So he, you he know, opened the door to China. Opened the door to China, but also, you know, uh, instrumental throughout Europe as well. Um, during that time of the, you know, coming out of the World War II, kind of redrawing the world and, and setting peace and stuff like that. Um, so he was very influential and he still is today, right? He's, and he was teaching at, was it MIT or Yale or one of the big college, one of the big universities is where Klaus Schwab that, met him and studied under him. That's right. That's right. So Klaus Schwab studied under him. I, I forget which university it was, but um, yeah, he studied under him. And so he's carried on the same the philosophy, the same philosophies. Yeah. And I think, uh, you know, people say, oh, you're drawing, you're, 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 you're cherry picking data. Well, really? Like, what are the attack vectors today? So food, <laughs> We're running out of food. Per the UN, they say 800, I think it's 868 million people could starve to death in the next 24 months. Well, you look at what's happening in Sri Lanka today. Yeah. Do you know, there's rioting going on and all this because it's corruption. I and mean, yeah. basic corruption is what it is, but they're starving. Yeah, they're starving. And the Ukraine is going to starve a lot of people. They're, they're starving and they have no energy. And so the, and the whole it, Green New Deal is, is killing so, our energy. <laughs> so, so Sri Lanka has the, the best ESG score in the world, 98 out of 100. <laughs> Great. Yay. <Yeah. laughs> they passed the test. Yeah. Just yeah. like uh, school. The, it means nothing. They had, they had put out an article um, um, two years ago said that by 2025, they were going to be one of the richest nations. They were going to be the poster child for ESG. Uh, and it was on the WF website. They and sent, ESG stands for? Uh, environmental, social, and governance. So they'd give you a score based off of these three metrics, uh, how environmentally sound you are, environmentally uh, low impact on environment, uh, your social how, your social score, and then your governance. Do you have diversity on your board and all of these things? And um, so they were, they were going to be the poster child for this. They, they proclaimed that we will be the best by 2025, they said. By 2025, we'll be one of the richest nations in the world based off of this sustainability. Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka. Coming apart of the seams right now. Well, no, they're, 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 gone. they're completely gone. Yeah. They, they defaulted on their bonds. They got no money. Nobody will loan them any more money. They don't have any money to import any energy. So they have no energy. So they went the path that the great reset is all about and they're gone. And they're gone. That Just should like that. say something. So who, um, let me ask this, who came up with ESG? Do you know? Uh, I'm not exactly sure who f who started ESG. It, it came out of the the, the WEF, the WEF, we'll call it, the WEF uh, camp, um, and it came out of that. Uh, it, it's just a way to control people. So are you saying Kissinger, how would you classify his political core? Is it fascist? Power and control. But it's fascist. Yeah, fascist. I think uh, those labels are difficult, right? They're, they're fascist, uh, sure. Do you, do you know where he got his education or his ideolo ideology? Uh, I don't, but I but I, but I can see like the the world that he grew up in, right? So World yeah. War One, World War Two. So that shaped his worldview. I don't yeah. know exactly who he studied. But the under. reason the reason I, I was shocked when you just said that I'm going because when I was a kid, he was extremely well respected. Oh yeah, you know he was Nixon. He was doing all these global initiatives and all that stuff. And then to hear him associated with Klaus Schwab, who I don't know much about anyway. And then, then Schaub was a student of Kissinger. It makes what you and I and we teach and so many guys like George Gammon and Kenny Mack makes what we teach more important. Yeah. Because we teach freedom of cap and capitalism. And these guys te teach fascism. Communism. Communism.